Welcome back, EV enthusiasts. In today's episode, we're diving into a topic that you might have even experienced yourself. You might have heard buzzing about lately, but it didn't really make a huge splash. But I I do think it opens up an interesting conversation about EV infrastructure. And that is idle fees at charging stations. How do these fees work? Which networks are incorporating them into their EV infrastructure in the public? And also, what does this mean for the broader EV landscape in general? Let's plug in and dive in together. I'm your host, Francie, and this is the Out of Spec Podcast. Thank you for joining us today. I am back from a, a long two-week trip traveling with the Out of Spec team, and it's nice to kind of sit still for a second and bring you a podcast from my home, which you can see here. So before we delve into the details, let's clarify exactly what idle fees are. When you park your electric vehicle at a charging station, but don't unplug once your session is complete, charging networks will often charge you, or not, actually not often, as we'll get into in a minute, but you could be charged an idle fee for sitting there, for taking up what could be a utilized space. You didn't get out of there quick enough. So they're designed to encourage users to free up the charge point when they're done so that others can use it and promote a more efficient use of the charging infrastructure. I mean, I know it's etiquette at a gas station to pull up uh, and gas up and then leave, but there's not really an idle fee. Someone might get mad at you, but it's it was never really a discussion that you would be charged more. So idle fees uh, have a question of the you know software behind everything, how that's going to work, and also how we could see this really changing consumer behavior, how it is accepted or rejected by consumers, and how companies essentially work on the back end to shape driver and charging behavior, which can be Two different things, definitely. So recently, Tesla announced that they will be charging their new congestion fees. Hopefully, that's the only form of congestion we're going to be feeling around this time of year with everyone being on the road, hopefully not too much traffic, and with spending all your time with family and little ones, hopefully no one is getting sick. So stay safe and healthy out there, team. But how are the idle fees different from congestion fees? So the, they actually are different. These congestion fees will actually be replacing idle fees at certain sites. I guess that's probably part of a rollout, and I'd be interested to see which sites they're starting with first, and specifically supercharger locations. But it will affect anyone charging on the network. So it's not just Tesla's, it's not just CCS um, you know, using adapters, but all EVs charging into Tesla superchargers, by the way. So this will be a fee where customers pay extra when a supercharger is busy and when the customer's battery is above a certain level, which is listed as 90% on their website, which we'll show here. And there's no exact number on what busy means for a congestion fee. We'll get into the numbers for what an idle fee congestion or the idle fee numbers are, but um, it's not specific here. And I assume, again, this is probably new and they're waiting to see how it rolls out, but they'll probably use the structure for idle fees a little bit. It'll be interesting to see, of course. As per Tesla's website, customers can see the battery charge level where congestion fees apply on their vehicle's touchscreen. So of course, Tesla is building this into the software. No surprise there. As per Tesla, this fee encourages drivers to charge only as much as is needed for their trip rather than all the way to 100%. This increases the availability of superchargers so that everyone has access when they need it. We know at Out of Spec that there is, you know, some ideal ways to pull up at a charging station. Sometimes you don't really have a choice. You just need to charge how you need to charge. But if you're fast charging also all the way up to 100%, that's putting a lot of strain on your battery, which of course just uses it harder and decreases perhaps, as we know, the longevity of the battery in general. So there's a certain behavior that we like to do. Show up with a low percentage, make sure you're going to get there. But the EV EV infrastructure is just getting better and better where you really can get to stations. We've been on the road a little bit, driving around the southeast and, of course, in California. But you can find chargers more and more, which is really cool to see. But I know there are deserts out there. I read your comments. And um, I know that a lot of y'all are still waiting for infrastructure where you are. But anyways, so far, this is only the congestion fee is only listed as something that is being applied in the United States, where customers will incur a one dollar congestion fee per minute that your EV is plugged in into the supercharger at over 90 percent state of charge. So, like I said, this will be replacing idle fees. So idle fees still exist. So what are idle fees then, according to Tesla on their supercharger network? So the Tesla application enables owners to see their vehicle, of course, and notify them when the charging process is almost finished. And again, when they've reached their charge limit, whatever it is set by the 
by the car, whether it's 80%, 60%, or 100%. And then any extra time that the vehicle spends connected to the supercharger will result in an idle fee. So however, if it's relocated within the first five minute, Tesla says the fee is waived, like you, you, you made it in time. But it's also incurred customers get charged when the station is at 50% full at 50% capacity or higher. So this is a hard number that they have for the idle fees. Whereas with the congestion fees, it just says busy at this point. So also if the station is 100% full, then you will get charged twice as much as the idle fees. And you can see them. I think it's based on the location of the charger. Um, but let me see here. Actually it's no, it's, it's by country and region. So in the U S you are charged 50 cents per minute and of course double that when it is double as full so this is this congestion fee is a first for tesla they had their idle fees but it's coming into play as they move towards a more open public network is this an industry standard not really so evgo has you know toyed with the idea of idle fees in the past from, you know, certainly considering them, but they're not really implemented in the, across their network at all. So it's not listed on their sites as far as I know, but let me know if you have incurred an idle fee before. Electrify America states that idle fees may be imposed for parking time after your charging session has ended, but it doesn't get specific about when or where on their website. It just pointed to the information that is within their app or on the screen when you pull up to a charger to see what the fees are. So maybe at a more busy location, like a uh, popular grocery store or whatever it is, they will try to push you out uh, you know, earlier so that you can get on your way and someone else can get in there. And as for ChargePoint, since they are their chargers are independently independently owned by the hosts, each station owner can set different fees for charging, and this includes idle fees. So it's really just determined by the site host whether or not you're going to be charged an idle fee at a ChargePoint station. So you're probably just going to have to check the app to see what that site host has determined as their fees at that location. I think this is really starting to show how things will be changing on the small and large scale as the Tesla supercharger network opens up and more and more EVs get on the road. So companies have always, and, and governments, and almost anything running any kind of business has always been trying to shape consumer behavior in one way or another. So either incentivizing or de-incentivizing de de something. And more and more EVs on the road and more and more infrastructure to match it you know, we don't know if those will scale at the exact same rate, more EVs on the road before we have the infrastructure or vice versa. Um, there will definitely be more ways that we're trying to optimize usage of the charging networks, amongst other things. So we'll have to keep an eye out about uh, on what companies are implementing across their network. If they're appreciated by their customers or not, let me know. What do you think about the congestion fee? Do we even need idle fees in the first place? I mean, I think that it is definitely needed, you know, if something can be used and you're in the way, hop on out of there. I think it's harder to charge ICE vehicles who are icing out stations, of course, because they're not plugged in and the charger operators do not have their information. So this doesn't really address icing so much as it does other EV owners being within the EV charging spaces when they can hop on out of there. So I actually think congestion fees are a good idea. 90% is definitely enough to get you a longer way, at least to your next stop. And maybe this will open up the opportunity also for people to learn more about their batteries and their battery health and ideal battery charging behavior. This is something I'm sure we can all think about as we get on the road on the holiday season too. Are you going to be caught up at a busy charger? Hopefully not, but but maybe that's actually just a regular for you living maybe in an apartment with an EV where you only have to supercharge and you're in a busy city or something like that. So would love to know your experience if you're if you charge out on public. A lot of people only charge at home. But I think some of us will at some point come across a busy station and we'll see if EVgo, Electrify America, ChargePoint, Blink, SEMA, all those out there will start to implement something similar. With more and more EVs on the road, I'm sure we'll see more and more trends in this direction. So we'll keep an eye on the industry. Time will tell. I hope you all are doing great today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think in the comments. It's great to be back here and to bring you some more podcasts this week before we head out on another trip for the Out of Spec team. I will see you next time on the Out of Spec podcast.